welcome everybody to uh, a new episode of the LOG Dynasty cast. It has been, I don't know, forever since I last recorded, and I have a special guest here today, so welcome, Edward. Hey. Uh, yeah, we are we are hanging out at, at the house today. Uh, he came up this weekend. We were supposed to do a barbecue competition that got canceled, unfortunately, um, but we hung out anyway, and... We're talking football and smoking a brisket right now. Yeah, so we just decided to do our own barbecue competition with ourselves. With ourselves, <laughs> yeah, with ourselves. <laughs> this is this is a big learning experience for me on the brisket. So it's it's been fun uh, watching the master at work. I would say, <laughs> um, and yes, we're having drinks at uh, what what time is it? Ten twenty a.m. So like you do, uh, like, like you do. Uh, he's been a great influence. So. <laughs> as i always say cheers, cheers 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 to that to be fair we've been up for four hours cooking already so it's like it's afternoon yeah 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 it's uh no like air guitar or something like yeah. that you know uh, didn't just wake up and crack a cold one right <laughs> um but yeah yeah we uh we did some ribs last night uh and they turned out they turned out great um it and, turned out okay yeah well we, we have higher hopes for the, the brisket <laughs> yeah. today um but yeah, so we figured, you know, might as well just talk football and um, and, and talk about this NFL season. Uh, we haven't had a podcast in a long time, so attempting to um, like recap all that is probably, you know, just a fool's errand. So um, we can just dive right into what we think is interesting. Um, and really what uh what sparked this one was a cool topic that uh that eddie brought up um while we were actually watching football last night um well uofl won so that was fun um and you know we were, we were talking about uh how things are like the different perspective you have based on um how good or or bad your 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 team is and i don't know if you want to like Go yeah. into more detail of that. <laughs> so, like, the thing I was saying, because we were we were talking about uh, Sunday Ticket and Red Zone and just that whole experience of watching football. And when you're in a redraft and, and you want to win every week, like, there's, there's something in every game that, for the most part, you're probably interested in. Either you have a guy on your team or the person you're playing that week has a guy in most every game. So you've got some reason to pay attention to that. But... In Dynasty, when you're in a build, and like I honestly couldn't tell you what my starting roster is right now, <laughs> <laughs> but I know I'm not gonna win, and and I don't care to watch, you know, the Giants versus um, the Raiders or whatever on a Sunday night game anymore because it's there's there's no value there for me um, immediately. I mean, I guess I could be scouting young players and seeing how rookies are doing and, and trying to figure out where, where low value is or something like that. But it, it's definitely taken away the joy of, of red zone. And I've definitely, when I turned on games this year, I've been watching full games uh, for the most part, but I thought I was just going to have the luxury of just sitting back and being a bears fan. <laughs> <laughs> yes. yeah. That hasn't worked out. Yeah. Well. That has not worked out very well. <laughs> I do. I have, so I have a question for you. Do you know your record right now? In our league? What week are we on? We are on week three. <laughs> week, four. Four. week four. I am 0 and three then. You're 0 and three. Okay. Well, I have something to tell you. You are one and two. You have won a game. I apologize to whoever that was. <laughs> yeah. So I'm glad we were able to make that discovery. Based on what you said, I was I was like pretty sure that that, that would come up. Had, so had no clue. Yeah. So um on yeah. the back of CJ Stroud, I assume. Yeah, so yeah, yeah so <laughs> let's talk about your week three. <laughs> Wonderful. So, yeah, so week three. Uh, Eddie, Eddie and Lewis played each other. Oh, uh, sorry, bud. But we're both, uh, that's, yeah. Yeah, yeah, you guys are in, in similar spots where you're, you're rebuilding. So, uh, guys having a big week can really turn things around. But I will say, you know, you had some guys score touchdowns, which is, you know, a big deal when, when you have these players with, like, lower usage. Um, looking at guys like 
Clyde Edwards Elaire had a pretty good week. I tried to give him to all of you. Yeah, yeah. Well, he's, he's probably still still available. <laughs> Very much so. Michael Gallup putting up twelve. Yeah. Braid up. Also but, available. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, uh, Lewis had an unfortunate week where he didn't get any touchdowns at all, except from I think Jordan Love. So that really does hurt your score uh, volatility there, but. Anyway, I think that's hilarious uh, that we uncovered that here. (laughs) Again, though, a win, but with 69.3 points. Yeah, true. (laughs) Would would I have beaten anyone else in the league? I'm guessing no. Probably not. Um, But, yeah, so you've got your your young team. Uh, You only made a few picks this year. Uh, rookie picks, and you're starting all of them, pretty much, right? Yep. With C.J. Stroud, Michael Mayer, and Jonathan Mingo. And um, that's a pretty normal hit rate for your rookies. Like, between the three of them, I'd say one of them is hit. So oh, I'm far. Right. Yeah, so, you, I mean, and I think people, I don't know what expectations people had. I, I, that would be an interesting thing to kind of dive into, like, do you think all rookies are just going to hit right away? And the answer is definitely no. And like right. more often than not, they're not going to hit for a while. Um, and, and the expectation and, and the hope is that Mayer mm-hmm. develops over years, right? Because tight end mm-hmm. takes a little while. Mm-hmm. Uh, and if, if he's at the two, three year mark and starts to develop into a stud, then he's right on time for my build. Like I don't need him to do anything this year. You don't, you don't. You just hope he like gets better and yeah. he gets opportunities. And he's still playing a lot. I think, you know, we could probably look up his snap percentage really fast just to make sure that he's, you know, getting a lot of time. You know, he's getting, you know, close to fifty percent snap percentage right now, which isn't terrible for a rookie. Uh, not great. We probably want him if we looked up Laporta, he's probably out there ninety percent of the time, but um He's kind of a unicorn uh, this year, but and they're meant to be outside. Yeah, porta potties, porta potties. Yes, yes. <laughs> they're, they're always out there. You don't bring those in. <laughs> yeah, I'm really shocked. Uh, Waldrop hasn't changed his team name to La Porta Potty yet. You know, I think it's uh, it's coming. It, it's definitely on the way. Um, but yeah, and then and then Mingo, you're you're not getting much right now, but that offense is just really bad. Um, so that'll, that'll come with time. You can't really evaluate it just yet too much, but CJ Stroud looks like the best quarterback in the class, which I don't think it's, it's a funny thing. We like, no one would have thought that. I don't think anybody had them, him as their number one quarterback for fantasy. Um, I totally did. Yeah, you did. You definitely did. Yeah, you, what did you see in him? <laughs> uh, he was available. He was available. <laughs> when we he got to me, I was hopeful that he would be the right pick. Um, going into the draft, I had thought that I would take several quarterbacks and mm-hmm. just see which one hit because that was the thing I really wanted out of this year. I wanted to have my franchise quarterback, hopefully. Right. Don't get hurt, CJ, please. Right. Stay healthy. Right. Trust your blockers. <laughs> um, but I wanted the, the QB that I could build my team around for this kind of five-year run. Uh, and, and so that he's matured and looks good in year three and four, like some people, Justin Fields, um, which we'll get to, (laughs) but, uh, but yeah, so if, if he's really hit his stride about the time that Meyer gets good and I've got a QB and a tight end out of first year's draft, I think that's more than anybody could dream of and then figure out wide receiver next year and get into a spot when I have my own first round in 2025 Mm-hmm. Uh, so that I can get my my stud running back and start to be a, a win now kind of team in twenty six. It's got yeah. So let's look at your twenty twenty four picks right now. You've got what three the second, second round. You got three <laughs> picks in the second round. One of them is Bryce's, which we can talk about the teams. That one that's kind of an all in team. A key also a playoff team, um, and then Justin who is kind of straddling the line of whether he wants to um, be a playoff team this year or not. You know, it's uh, it's it's up in the air. Um, but he's had a tough schedule to start the year. So, yeah, and you've got some thirds and, and a bunch of fourths that um, maybe you can draft the next Puka Nakua, who uh, turns out to be, you know, a wide receiver one 
in year one on the Rams that no one could have predicted. So um, there is that possibility. They're just few and far between. I can't even think of an analog to Nakua in other drafts like last year or the year before. Like just a guy super, super late taken that that shows that much promise. So yeah. it does happen. Alvin Kamara is a great example. Austin Eckler is a great example. But, you know, that's a long time ago. And we weren't yeah. playing Dynasty then, so... Um, Cordero Patterson. Yes. I still remember that was Matt Kaufman's hot tip the year of the D.C. Uh, mm-hmm. Robin Thicke draft was <laughs> Cordero Patterson. Take a flyer on him in late rounds. If right. we'd been doing Dynasty then, that would have been great advice. <laughs> it would have been excellent advice back then. Um, well, I feel like uh, you already talked about this, but maybe we maybe we skip to the, the Bears fan uh, side. Uh, you know, this year hasn't exactly gone the best way. How many games have you caught, and, and what are your thoughts so far? So I watched all of the Green Bay game, mm-hmm. which was miserable. Bless you. Um... Saw a good chunk of the Kansas City game Mm -hmm. because Red Zone really likes showing Kansas City and (laughs) they were in the Red Zone a majority of the game time during that game. Um, They're awful. Um, I don't think there's anything wrong with fields per se. Um, That offensive line is absolutely terrible. Mm -hmm. The coaching staff does not know how to call plays for Justin Fields. The defense couldn't stop anybody. Uh, it's it's just been rough to watch. We do you want to talk about QB school? Yeah, we we could talk about QB school. So uh, I think I plugged this in the group chat at some point, but one of my favorite YouTube channels is the QB School. Uh, not JT, a sponsor. JT O'Sullivan. Yeah, not a sponsor. <laughs> uh, <laughs> he's he's uh, really good at breaking film down and um i think it's it's you know he he's had two very long videos on justin fields and just trying to figure out what's going on there and i would say i would disagree that like none of it's on fields i would i would say that some of it is definitely on him you know he's he's hesitant and at some point he's just got to assert dominance and and be that dude um but I wonder how much of it is what we were talking about last night. Like, you can tell that they have coached him to go through the progression and check down. Mm-hmm. And it's just been drilled into him. Like, there was one play that we watched where he he goes through the progression way too fast mm-hmm. and has just somebody wide open and instead checks it down to a little one-yard lost screen pass. And I'm wondering how much of that is just the, the system, mm-hmm. which some of that bodes well, right? He's coachable. Mm-hmm. Like that that's the positive spin you put on it as a fan is like, well, he's obviously buying into the system. It's just it's the wrong system. <laughs> the for system him. sucks. Yeah, the system <laughs> sucks. And it's especially wrong for him. But they're just doing stupid stuff. Like we looked at first third down of the year and they this do this cute little draw play where they pull commit to mm-hmm. sneak it on mm-hmm. third and less than one. Yeah. And he's not that dude. Yeah, he's not <laughs> he, it. He doesn't uh, get on that it's just, Yeah, they're not coached well. Um, it'll be interesting to see, you know, this week is a really big turning point for them. Like if if, if they if they lose to the Broncos, I feel like the coaches get fired. They have to, right? Because they like the Broncos just lost so badly to the Dolphins. They like, gave up 70. They gave up the 70. Dolphins. Historic numbers. Like, if the Bears can't manage to either beat them or at least play them very competitively, then uh, I feel like if it's a blowout, bad game like that Chiefs game was, I feel like you have to fire somebody and the coaching staff and um, kind of rethink things. So that'll be interesting. I obviously was a big Bears believer. I had Justin Fields. I have DJ Moore on my team. I really thought that that combination was going to be lethal, honestly. Uh, and it should be. And it, it, it's just sad to see the staff not even like have any designed runs for Fields to like open up the offense. It's just a weird thing, weird decision to take someone's best skill and not use it and, and like try to make them something they're not. And, uh, 
for fantasy, that is very sad. Uh, for the Bears franchise, it's actually pretty sad because, um, you know, maybe they think long term, like he has to be a pocket passer to be successful and like the running will go away at some point. And maybe those things are true, but um, he's obviously much better at one thing than the other. Like he's much better at running. Why don't you use that skill? If, if they make him a strictly pocket passer, he will not be in the league long enough for the legs to go away. Mm-hmm. He is that bad as a pocket passer. He's, he's um, yeah, he's just very hesitant right now and uh, not trusting his reads and things like that. And 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 you brought this up too, like um, his offensive line, right? Like how much does he trust his offensive line? And so maybe that's why he's like checking down so quickly and uh, all those things, but uh we'll see we'll see what happens with the bears but the bears are are one of those teams uh that uh we kind of expected to be better than they were and i think that's what i kind of want to go into next is just like just real quick can i hit them with the the stat from the meme we saw this morning oh yes yes, yes, yes. since since october last year uh every (laughs) major sports franchise not nfl team every major sports franchise in the u.s mlb nba mls and nfl has at least one win Except for my Chicago Bears. Your Chicago Bears, <laughs> baby. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's brutal. Um, so hopefully they get a win this weekend and can be a little bit more competent. I think that would be good for the mental health of the city of Chicago. Uh, I've never, you know, just being connected to Bears Twitter is just like pretty brutal i mean it's bad it's, it's, it's in a bad spot you have people that were very excited about this season only to have their hopes like absolutely murdered they're getting a new stadium yeah hopefully they get a team yeah uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah yeah that's true yeah it's like how can we have a new stadium in this bad of a team um Back anyway, sorry to interrupt. Who who else is not who we thought they were? Well, so yeah, the yeah, yeah, so there's 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 some teams out there that are pretty obvious, like, and I think because of injuries. So we look at like the uh, Jets, for example, like with Aaron Rodgers being hurt. That Gee. that that hurts uh, everybody on that offense. You you know you've got your Brees Halls, your Dalvin Cooks, your Garrett Wilson in particular is probably the biggest one that that just got crushed. You can't use anything else on that team. And really, it's hard to use those three guys. Um, Zach Wilson's just been so bad uh, that uh, even like the QB school, when we were plugging that earlier, like he won't do a video on Zach Wilson because Zach Wilson is just so incredibly bad at quarterbacking. And... The second uh, coming of Mark Sanchez. Yeah, and and so <laughs> I don't know. Sanchez might be better. Um, but uh, anyway, so so that's one of them. But that's fairly obvious why you know losing your MVP quarterback. Um, is, so here's here's my question though: Are they that much better with Rodgers? Yes, obviously they're better, but I still think they're a worse team than people planned on them being with because they had all the hype around Hard Knocks. Mm-hmm. I don't think they win that division even with a healthy Rodgers. Yeah. Uh, I think their offensive line isn't as good as they hoped uh, because if their offensive line was good, even if Zach Wilson was absolutely dreadful like he is, they could still maybe run the football a little bit. And they can't. They can't right now. So I think there's some problems there. Um, their defense is pretty good. And, um, and I, I don't want to – Besmirch of a future Hall of Famer, but hmm. if you watch those four plays in Aaron Rodgers' Jets career, he was hurried on all of them, knocked down three of them, I think. I, I can't say he did or didn't, but I couldn't blame the guy if he just said, you know what? Well, <laughs> it could have been a long year for him. Yeah. Um, well, okay, so Jets are an obvious one. Bengals are another one. You know, Jamar Chase finally had a good week last week just because of volume, but it looks like Joe Burrow has got a calf injury that's just, like, keeping him pretty limited. So that was one of those offenses you just kind of penciled in in fantasy football as, like, oh, Jamar Chase, T. T Higgins, like, Jamar's going to be – he could be the wide receiver one. Uh, T. Higgins could be a low-end wide receiver one. Joe Mixon, RB1. Mixon's had an okay start to the season, Um, so – he still looks like he's maybe got it, but 
yeah, that offense can't really do much because Joe Burrow can't move and he can't throw the ball very far. You know, it's a lot of really short passes. Who's uh, the backup in Cincinnati? Yeah, I can I can tell you. Uh, yeah, I don't know this. They actually talked about this on our chat the other day, so sure. I I can't remember though. Uh, my my concern is again everything comes back to to the Bears for me because that's what I'm most related to. But that year that they went to the Super Bowl. And you had the the Rex Grossman and uh, uh, can't even think of the other guy's name. Uh, Kyle Orton. Kyle Orton. Switching back and forth. Grossman was hurt. Mm-hmm. You've got a great team. Mm-hmm. And presumably you have a serviceable backup. If you've got a quarterback that you're willing to pay what they just signed Burrow for, mm-hmm. why don't you sit him until he's healthy for those first few weeks of the season? You know, maybe the thought is, well, we need to be competitive in this division. But, again, yeah. serviceable NFL backup is probably just as competitive in those games as a Hurt Burrow, and you're just expending the period of time that he's going to be less than 100%. Yeah, I think the circumstances were interesting. You know, they had lost a couple games to start the season, and they're, it's a team with Super Bowl aspirations, so if you lose more, then it's like, can we even possibly come back from that? I felt I feel, feel like there was some pressure to, like, win that last game. Um, and they did not like convincingly or anything. I mean, it was, it was close. Uh, but is that who the Bengals are? Do you need a, a Jordan flu game at a burrow to win a regular season game? Then? Right. Like, right. Yeah. 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 Uh, yeah. I don't know. So I think it's a good point though. Um, you know, you don't want to like injure your quarterback long-term, but I, I don't know the injury well enough. If it's like just pain tolerance or, or what, uh, but it, it doesn't seem like it's just pain tolerance. He literally cannot move in the pocket. That's why you don't skip leg day. No, that's why you don't skip leg day. Um, all right. So other teams I can think of that are bad. I mean, that worse than we thought. I think everyone kind of thought Sean Payton would come in and fix the Broncos in some way, <laughs> and he did not. He did. <laughs> <laughs> he did not. And so. That has some fantasy implications, too. I mean, Russell Wilson has actually been pretty good for fantasy just because of volume. Um, and he's scored some touchdowns. He's thrown some long bombs. Um, I think everyone kind of hoped that Javante, Jerry Judy, Corlin Sutton. I don't know if people had high hopes for Sutton, but at least this offense would be pretty good. Um, and so far, they haven't been um just trying to think of other teams. Pittsburgh's another one that kind of comes to mind um, where everyone was talking them up preseason. And, God, I don't care what happens in preseason anymore, like even a little bit, because Kenny Pickett looked really, really bad for the first few games of the season here. Um, and then Deontay Johnson got hurt. They're just they're just not that good uh, on that side of the ball. Um and their defense isn't even as good as it used to be, so uh, it's not that um, dominant of a team anymore. Um, Packers? Would you throw them in that mix? That Packers are a tough one uh, for me. Um, they come out week one against the Bears, and you think Jordan Love as well. Here we go. We got another yeah twenty years of a Hall of Famer in Green Bay, but yeah, they looked really human against the Lions. Mm-hmm. And so the Lions, are they one of those teams that just, like, is really, really good this year? Or are they one of the top teams in the league? Or, and that's what happened to the Bears? Uh, I don't know. I really thought the Bears' defense would be better. Uh, or, I mean, not, not the Green, Bears, Bay. Green Bay's defense would be better against the Lions, and it would be a lower-scoring game. Just from what I've seen from the Green Bay defense, they seem pretty competent. I think Jair Alexander might have missed the last game, which is pretty huge um, as one of the best corners in the league. Um, so. I do think Detroit wins the North going away. Yeah, I don't think it's a question anymore, yeah. right? Like, you can't look at a single team and be like, yeah, they could compete. Really, the Packers were the only one that you were maybe thinking about. I thought maybe the Vikings were going to be that kind of surprise team. But, yeah. But no. So, and then the Vikings are an interesting case. Like, they're a bad team, but they're great for fantasy because mm-hmm. Kirk Cousins just slings it, you know? <laughs> he, to Justin he, Jefferson. <laughs> yes, to Justin Jefferson, Jordan Addison, TJ Hawkinson. They're all pretty relevant. Uh, the running back situation is kind of uh, up in the air. Um, I guess they traded for Acres. They've got Madison there, but um, yeah, 
uh, that team is bad, but good for fantasy. And um, everybody's excited about that. And then on the flip side, we've got some teams that um, were maybe better than we even expected. Um, I think, you know, everyone kind of thought the Eagles would be a good team. So it's not surprising that they're doing well. Yeah. Everyone thought the Niners would be a good team, but I don't think they expected the offense to be as good as it is. So I want to talk about, I can't remember if we've talked about this in the the chat or not, but I saw, I caught this on something the other day and I thought it was an interesting question. Is Brock Purdy good? Yeah. Um, I, I think he is, um, you know, what's the best way? He takes risks more than I thought he would. I thought, you know, people might label him as like a system QB or something like that. Um, but he really does, you know, throw it up there for his wide receivers to make a play. And I like that about him, actually. Okay. You know, um, you watch a guy like Jimmy Garoppolo, for instance, for years, and he's just throwing short passes and he's not taking risks. And these wide receivers don't get these big plays. The, the only ways that they're getting these big chunk plays in past years were yak you know you you, right. you you get Debo a short little screen and he runs you know for 40 yards and a touchdown I think that's a valid point so the the discussion around that that kind of caught my ear was are the 49ers as complete a team as as we have in the NFL this season such that do you really lose that much if you were to drop in say a Kirk Cousins or mm-hmm. a Justin Fields mm-hmm. even a Zach Wilson would it make that much difference and are they that much better if you drop in, say, a, a Rodgers, yeah. a healthy Rodgers? And and they have a they have a complete team. But back to your point, maybe that is Purdy's just dangerous enough that he makes it work. Uh, yeah, but he also makes some bad plays, too. I mean, he, when you take risks like that, you're. Uh, I, I think he's one of those guys that you can go back and you can look at the tape and they would say, wow, there should have been like three interceptions this game. Yeah. But he just kind of lucked out in that respect. Um, so, but I mean, he just keeps winning. So that's, that's a good sign. Take Uh, that over the one yard loss check down. Exactly. Exactly. So I think that's really good for their offense. Um, I don't think he's like, I don't think you could take Purdy and plug him into a lot of teams and him be like super successful because you just have two really good wide receivers and Kittle and Christian McCaffrey there. Like that's the, some of the best weapons in the league. Um, so he's he's very lucky in that respect. I mean, throw Purdy on the Carolina Panthers right now, and like I don't even know who their number one is. Is it Adam Thielen right now? I don't. Yeah, I, I think so. But Adam Thielen's old. Um, so what's he like? Twenty six, twenty seven. <sighs> I think a little older than that. Yeah, maybe like thirty three. But uh, okay. uh, if I had to take a guess, but uh, we'll we'll find out. Um, so. Yeah, that's that's one of the teams that maybe surprised us. And I think Miami is the other one that is obvious. Like, we thought they would have a good offense, but we didn't know how good. And it's just, like, historic right now. Uh, eight touchdowns from the running backs combined last week. Um, truly a crazy game. Uh, I don't know. That's not going to happen going forward every week, but because uh, you're not playing the Broncos every week. Um which is a dreadful team, but that that Patriots this week, is that right? Uh, is it the Patriots this week? I think they already played. They already played Patriots. Patriots. Uh, I'm trying to remember, I could just look at my league. What? Uh, Which league is that? Our, my main league. <laughs> no, they're playing Buffalo this week. Yeah, okay. uh, Buffalo. Is Buffalo on that list of teams that aren't what we thought they were. Yeah, they had a rough week one against the Jets, where. Um, they lost to Zach Wilson Jets. Yeah, Josh Jets. Allen looked human there. He kept making mistakes over and over again. But since then, I feel like their schedule hasn't been that rough, and they have dominated. I mean, they have just murdered everybody they played, and so they're showing that they are they are a legit team. Um, yeah, we'll see. And the bigger games against tougher defenses. Is Josh Allen's. I think this weekend will be interesting because um, he's playing against a really uh, tough. Well, I'm not sure about the Miami defense. I think they're good. I don't know if they're great, um, but they're they're doing a good job this year so far. Um, how will Josh Allen do there? 
And then um, he also will be very pressured to put up points against that team because they are going to score. So he likes it just like Purdy. We were talking about Purdy, Josh Allen, one of those big risk takers. Like you think he should check it. He like, he's the opposite of what fields is doing right now. He, yep. he does not look for the check downs. Um, but so uh, I guess I brought up this topic because I always think the beginning of the season is really interesting. Um, you know, you plan all off season for a fantasy league, right? And you're like, ah, uh, I know this offense is going to be so good, or I know this, you know, this defense is going to be really tough, uh, or whatever. And then all that kind of goes out the window once the the season starts and the injuries pile up. Um, and so that really does impact some teams that maybe thought they were competing or, or don't. Um, and, and so in our league, um, you know, it, it, in our dynasty league, it, things have changed pretty drastically from a couple months ago when we drafted. Unless you're David. Unless you're David. Yeah. So David looks like a, a dominant team. You need to have any team with Patrick Mahomes, uh, Christian McCaffrey, Tyree Kill. So that's the three best players at um they're they're all the best at their position right now. That might be a hot take. Tyree Kill in our league with the scoring bonuses. Is he scoring more than Justin Jefferson? I think so right now. Um I could take a look, but that's that's a pretty big advantage every week. I would honestly argue Tony Pollard is up there. Uh I mean he's RB5 right now in our league. He could easily be RB2 in the league right now because uh, the Cowboys just love to run the ball. So that's, that's – and obviously McCaffrey's doing his thing like he did, you know, in previous years where he's scoring 20-something points a game. He's like having an extra quarterback on your team. So, yeah, David David is just completely dominant. Um, and he made some good trades. He traded for David Montgomery, who just went for 30 points uh, – you know, on Thursday night. Um, it's amazing what 30 miles north does to performance. It is amazing. <laughs> it's amazing. So, yeah, that yeah for him, nothing has changed. He won a championship, and I'd say he's even more dominant this year because, well, w- one part of it is the Miami offense looks amazing, and Tyree Kill just looks completely unguardable uh, every week. They're just putting people in motion, and he can't be guarded. And, um yeah, they're just they're just running really a really fun offensive scheme, which is very in in complete contrast to the Bears. <laughs> I mean, it's just like like you got like the smartest people on the the the, the Dolphins there. Um, so other teams, I think probably the big story in our league is with Waldrop. Uh, welcome to Picklands. Welcome to Pickland. Yeah, you got a fellow rebuilder now. Yeah. Um, now. I guess, what do you think uh, about Waldrop becoming a rebuilder? Does it, is it just like a complete shock as much as it is, is to me? Like, uh, Oh, I'm definitely surprised. I'm, I think it's going to be fun uh, just by the nature of how much Waldrop prepares and preps for drafts. And mm-hmm. think, I think watching the next couple of years with him and Lewis interacting and planning and counter planning. Uh, I think that's going to be the most entertaining part of our league because it's like getting, you know, a heavyweight title fight for draft prep. Right. Like, <laughs> uh, I'm a little bit uh, sad that I'm in rebuild mode Why those two are both trying to also rebuild because I, I, they're going to know infinitely more and have run all of the, <laughs> the simulations and the projections and, simulated out through the 2035 season for all of these college freshmen and know what's going on. I think it's going to be fascinating to see them sort of try to position against each other and how they're going to make their moves as they try to build. And then, I mean, ideally what happens is five years from now, uh, instead of the the David Bryce back and forth we have this year, it's going to be Waldrop and Lewis, mm-hmm. and hopefully me in there too, but realistically it's going to be those two long-term building towards just this, you know, like almost Lakers Celtics type rivalry where they built these teams that are just perennially competing against each other is what I'm hoping to watch because I think that's going to be a blast to see. But yeah, uh, that's a really good point you make about like them 
uh, going kind of against each other uh, you know, in the draft, and I haven't really considered that, but they're 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 kind of uh, rivals right now in the, in the in the draft world, and um, yeah, I don't know how much college football Waldrop actually watches. I don't think he watches any, and so uh, need and, and, and I've got the data, baby. And I'm not sure Lewis <laughs> says a ton, watched a ton either, but maybe he's watching a lot more this year. Um, better football, and it's, it's, it, it, that's what I'm slowly coming around. That you like college football it's better more. Football. It's yeah. more entertaining. Um, well, yeah, I. I Disagree. I love I love pro football. <laughs> Real football. Uh, I love pro football. So I uh, I have a hard time watching. No, college football is fun. Uh, it's honestly, and this might be a complete hot take, but uh, I watch so much NBA. It's really hard for me to watch the college basketball land until the tournament. I love the NCAA tournament, and like that that kind of like you win or go home mentality is super super fun. Can't beat that. Um, but the games themselves in the regular season, I have a hard time watching just because I'm used to watching people who do it for a living. And that's fair. Um, and that's a little different. It's like you expect them to make an open shot, you know, like that. That's just like an, an expectation that you have. To that point, though, I think the thing that I really appreciated getting into college football more that I never, never really kept up with or realized is. It's kind of winner go home all season long. Right. Like if you look consistently, those final four teams in the, the championship playoff are going to be undefeated or one win teams for the most part. Right. Like you get one week off all season that you can be kind of down. And other than that, you're, you're out of that championship. So it's, it's almost a four month March madness for college football, which is exciting. Like, yeah. And of course I bought into Coach Prime and <laughs> yes, Go Buffaloes. <laughs> like it's it's exciting for college yeah. football what? as a team. Like I don't have a team, right? Mm-hmm. So to have somebody to kind of follow, mm-hmm. I'm not gonna adopt them as my team, but I'm definitely pulling for them and it's kind of a fun story. So it's pretty It's fun. absolutely a fun story and like just uh, all the press he's gotten and and uh, celebrities and all that and involved and, and it's just a spectacle at this point. I think what gets missed though in a lot of that is Dion a really good coach. Yeah, I think he is. Like he's a great motivator. He is. He's and an excellent motivator. I mean, the game against the was it Colorado State, Colorado that was the prime time. It was a fantastic game. Now, yeah. They Absolutely. came out against Oregon, and maybe they they are who we thought they were, kind of thing. But mm. uh, I mean, I I picked them this week for the upset mm-hmm. over USC. We'll see if because I don't think they're gonna they they either bounce back and kind of have that like Belichick where we don't lose twice in a row, or it was a flash in the pan kind of thing. Still, still great turnaround of a program. Like how many times have you ever seen a Colorado football mm-hmm. game on prime time? But yeah, well, uh, we'll see. You watch that USC game, you might see, uh, you know, Lewis's future quarterback, Caleb Williams, there. Uh, I'm sure he's drafting him uh, next year, uh, unless he just believed in Jordan Love so much, um, or Trey Lance. I, I wouldn't do that. Yeah. Either. Yeah. But Caleb Williams, that could be the next Bears quarterback. Uh, the one silver lining for the Bears season is not only do they have their pick, but they also have the Carolina Panthers pick. And from the Bryce Young trade, and they are very bad, too. Uh, they're just as, they're not just as bad, but they are very bad. And so I think they've won a game. Um, and the Panthers could potentially have, you know, the second or third pick in the whole draft. So that's two really top players for the Bears. They don't use that to take two offensive tackles. Yeah. It's just a waste. Yeah, they need <laughs> – yeah, or – you know, trade fields, get one of them, a QB with one of them, and then an offensive tackle with another one. Yeah, the offensive line is a joke. The, but the the defense is so bad, too, that you could argue pretty much any position is, like, a position of need. Uh, yeah. It's, it's sad to say. Um, but, yeah, uh, we'll see what happens with the uh, Colorado-USC game this weekend. Uh, super fun. Um, definitely be checking that one out. Um yeah. So here's a question around college football I have for you. Mm. When you're watching players that you know are coming up in the next draft class or next two draft classes, mm-hmm. what are you looking for? Because, like you said, it's a big. There's a big jump from college football to the NFL. 
I am really bad at this. So you're not, you're asking the wrong person because uh, I mean, for me, the hard part is the teams can be so mismatched in college. Like mm -hmm. look like it, an Alabama offensive line, you know, it's like a Detroit Miami game or something. Yeah. 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 It's, <laughs> it, it's just, it's just brutal. You know, you've got, and, and, and so how do you evaluate that running back when he's playing with, you know, five linemen that are, you know, gonna go in the first couple rounds in the NFL draft versus the other team that has nobody, you know, like nobody going pro, maybe one guy going pro, like that, that's tough for me to evaluate. I guess for me, when I'm watching for running backs or wide receivers, it's kind of twitchiness, like athleticism. Do they show that kind of stuff? Um, <clears throat> and then um, I mean, there's some good channels on this, this stuff too, that I like to look at. Um, it's like good decision-making. Do they fight for yards after contact? Like those kind of situations. <clears throat> You're hoping that a guy doesn't just get open because of scheme, you know, cause college football is a lot about your scheme yeah. and, um, and that also makes players hard to evaluate. Like you look at a Jonathan Mingo last year. They just didn't throw the ball much, but he looked like a great athlete. And so he still goes like almost, you know, into the first round. He's the beginning of the second round in the NFL draft. They are taking a chance on him. Um, but like his receiving yards, if we looked at that stacked up against the rest of college football, it'd be very low. And uh, so it's like a project player in some ways. So there's like that athleticism is a really big part of it, but you're also looking for people that, um, can use their brain, you know, and, and that, that football IQ, that football IQ and, and, um, that, that's tough to evaluate, um, with some of these skill position players, QBs, <coughs> I think it's a little easier to evaluate them if they, if they got that factor or not, but even QBs, you look at like Justin Fields, uh, look like in college, he was a good passer. Now he had a lot of time. He also had, you know, Olave, Garrett Wilson, JSN, you know, those kind of guys. It's easy to look like a good passer. When, <laughs> yeah. you <laughs> when you've got like, you know, three top NFL wide receivers to throw to, they're just getting open like crazy. And you have a, yeah, that's the hard part for, for college, but I'm also not a college football aficionado. So um, it probably is easier for people who watch it all the time to be able to see somebody who really stands out. Um, that was a long winded way of answering your question, but. Um, yeah, so I guess, um, so we talked about David, we talked about Waldrop, um, talked about your team, uh, a little bit and congrats on the win, you Thanks. know, on the, the one win you didn't know about. Very exciting. Um, and I guess thinking about it, I, I think we'd be remiss on Waldrop's team to not mention that every player on his team got injured. Yeah. Uh, I mean, he just had really like the worst injury luck. Um, him and Miss Bach have had some bad injury luck. Um, Miss Bach losing JK Dobbins and also trading for Jonathan Taylor, who's been on the injured reserve. We don't know if he's going to play football this year. Um, he kind of got course. forced into a region, <clears throat> which, because he should have had a championship contender team. Waldrop? Well, yeah. 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 At least a playoff team. Oh, yeah. Well, Probably a championship team. He had like him and David in the final. Yeah, they, I mean Travis Kelsey gives you um, gives you a chance. So maybe we could talk about that for a second. Just like any trades. Um, well, I, I mean, maybe I'll hit on a couple teams. I mean, just just a couple teams. <clears throat> so um, one of the teams I'll be couple teams I'll be watching pretty heavily. What they're going to do next? Um, one of them is uh, Edmondson's team. Um, Edmondson had a really hot start the first couple weeks. Uh, Anthony Richardson looked legit. Uh, he got hurt, so that kind of set him back. This past week, he had to start Kenny Pickett, and he lost that game. Um, and then, you know, Devontae Smith's been amazing. Uh, TJ Hawkinson's been great. Uh, Romeo Dobbs has been pretty good. Like, is Edmondson ahead of the curve on the rebuild? Is he, like, closer to competing than we think? I think Jameer Gibbs is kind of a letdown for him uh, a little bit. And Javante hasn't um hasn't had a touchdown yet he's gotten a lot of work but he hasn't had a touchdown so I'm not sure his running back situation is a little shaky so uh, we'll see what he does with his team but i'll be interested to see if 
things kind of turn around and Gibbs gets more usage, Javante gets some touchdowns, his team could be pretty good and he could sneak in in the playoffs maybe um, faster than we think. The other one that I am interested in watching is uh, Justin's team. Um, I know Justin is like toying with the idea of, you know, getting um, like filling out his running back slots um, and, and trying to compete this year, <clears throat> but the season has started rough. Um, I have to look at how many wins he has. I'm, I'm not sure he has one, uh, right now he might have one. Well, he's got to start out on the, the bottom half, right? So whenever he flips the table, he flips, he's got to flip the table, right? <laughs> exactly. So he's 0-3 right now. He has Burrow who's been hurt. Uh, Najee and Madison have been bad. Jalen Waddle's been hurt. Jerry Judy's been hurt. Uh, Jordan Addison's been a pretty decent pickup. Um, from, I say pretty decent. He looks like a great rookie, but he's kind of a wide receiver too. Um, so, but he also has Nico Collins, who is really good. So I'm not sure what he's going to do. Is he going to be the next team to like sell some stuff? Um, because a, a lot of teams have sold already. We've had Josh, he's completely blown his team up. Waldrop's completely blown his team up. I don't really see too many other teams besides um maybe justin who might sell some pieces but justin seems pretty young um so we'll see what happens there <clears throat> so i have a a question that just occurred to me and maybe you can fill this in a bit for me as we get into years two and forward of dynasty does there come a point where the market for even if you want to blow your team up uh, somewhat skews towards either players or picks because it feels like right now all of the first that are out there, the people who have them, they're not really wanting to win now. So mm. whereas you might have gone out before and gotten a first for Kelsey uh, or something like that, if mm. you were trading with me. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, I'll, bad example. <laughs> I will say year one was a learning year <laughs> yeah. for us in terms of valuing picks. But, but you know what I mean? Like, people who have the, the first have the first for their, their plan. Mm -hmm. um, does that make it harder to blow up a team midseason if you decide you want to do that? I guess you just got to strike while the iron's hot, yeah. right? Like, that's the big thing. And no better example than what Waldrop did this past couple weeks. Um, because he uh, knew that there are a bunch of teams that are hungry to win a championship that he can sell his great players, his great old players <clears throat> to. Average age. Yeah. Nursing home. Nursing home. Average age wasn't, you know. Uh, Keenan Allen, 33. I, I, or is that right? Uh, Kelsey's 33. Maybe Allen's 31. Uh, There's something that feels so disingenuous about talking about 33-year-olds as being nursing home age. But. It's, it, is, <laughs> it, is, it is tough to think about. Aaron Jones, he just sold for, he's 28, uh, but in running back years, that's old. And so um, he got a lot of picks for them because we were all kind of bidding against each other and uh, probably played a little bit of a game against some of us, uh, you know, and tried to get us to up our offers, which is smart. It's how you should do it. Um, there's always going to be teams on the cusp of competing that are going to pay with their picks to try to get in that next tier. Right. And so I think there's always going to be an opportunity to do that. You just have to pick the right time to do it and not sell low, right? That's, that's what you're avoiding is just like, oh, I could have gotten two firsts for this guy and instead I got a second round pick. That was not good. Um, that's going to happen every single year. I mean... Yeah, we already have two teams that we thought were going to be competitors with Alex and maybe Josh. You know, we, <clears throat> at the beginning of the season, we thought he was competing. Um, and they're both not now, so. Um, yeah, and I guess only last thing I'll bring up is uh, we've got a couple teams... Yeah, we've got some teams, like, completely emptying the tank. One of them being Bryce. Uh, Bryce doesn't have a first anymore. <clears throat> He's got some seconds coming up. That's about it. A few second-round picks. Um, 
he's in it to win it now. So maybe he's the next team that in a few years or in a year, maybe even looks at his roster. If, if it's not winning, um, is it possible he, he, he blows it up just like Walter did. So I think there will always be teams like that uh, as teams age. Um, I'd be interested to see a Bryce rebuild. Yeah. I, I think it has the potential to be, it's going to look very different than the Alex and Matt rebuild mm-hmm. off that I was talking about. But I think Bryce has always kind of had more of a pulse on mm-hmm. college football than the rest of us have. Yeah. I think a Bryce rebuild could be really entertaining to just like, you talked about watching for that it factor and kind of mm-hmm. drafting on feel. I think he, he has the potential to just floor us with picks if, yeah. when he gets to that point. I think it could mm-hmm. be a lot of fun. Yeah. And I'll say, um, to me, draft capital is the number one <clears throat> thing you should use to make your decisions. And maybe that would, you know, maybe Bryce can change my mind. Uh, and I'm also assuming his draft strategy with college players. Right, too, yeah. So, but. Yeah, but the draft capital can get you in trouble too. I mean, you assume pretty high usage for players that are picked highly, and that doesn't always happen. So, um, well, anything else you wanted to bring up? I don't think so. Um, just for those looking for an update, our brisket's at 159 and a half degrees right now, so we're about to wrap, mm-hmm. uh, most likely. I know some of you were probably waiting on an update there. The pit's running right at 285 degrees. Jordan has a nice little remote baby monitor set up here, so we've yep. been watching that while we talked. We're doing our own Weber Kettle series, uh, so that's been that's been fun. Yeah, uh, for those of you in the in the league that know what that means, yeah, uh, if you don't, you're interested. <laughs> we'll point you that way. I mean, if I can do it, anybody here can do it. So, uh, yeah. All right. Well, thank you, Eddie. Great idea, and. Uh, We'll uh, see how the season goes for you. I hope you uh, find the joy for football uh, and your Bears here soon. I wouldn't bet on the Bears part of that. Yeah, me either. (laughs) All right, see you guys.